Um, and I, I, I texted you this the other day, but this is an interesting case of us pairing movies together that kind of have more in common than we initially thought. Um, because the BFI, I'm, I'm curious what? To see what what you think is are is it particularly in common between these two movies. But hey, it, it's it's it, they're both movies about being punished for forgetting your wife. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So the the Go, BFI spectral sound spirit, yeah, yeah. Movie continue, of the week continue. is the it's over there the classic Japanese. Film. Yeah, mm, I just noticed mm, that. So, so, some, totally somewhere know. there. I don't yeah, know. I still yeah. haven't figured out how to point uh, in <laughs> mirrored Zoom land. The movie of the yeah. week is uh, Kenji Mizuguchi's Ugetsu. Uh, Ugetsu Second Monogatari. Mizuguchi of the podcast. Yes, the first one was Sancho the Bailiff. And reviewed that a few few episodes ago. Yeah. And now we're reviewing Ugetsu, which is the second and final Mizuguchi film on the yeah. BFI list. And it is a movie I've seen before. Chandler has not. I'm not. Yeah. Uh, it is a it's one of those movies that it has a lot of backstory. It's one of the the call it the granddaddies of Japanese cinema, along with uh, Rashomon, I think. Uh Roger Ebert particularly uh, espoused the idea that this and Rashomon were the two movies that help uh, bring Japanese cinema to the the Western audiences and directed a lot of critical attention towards Japan in the uh, in the 50s. And then, of course, you know, after that, Kurosawa started shitting out masterpieces and (laughs) the world was ready, was prepared to receive them at that point. Um, but Curse. Mizuguchi, despite this film being, um, uh, it had wide critical reception when it was released throughout the world. Um, it has kind of fallen off uh, from the the uh, consciousness of, of film criticism. Sort of Mizuguchi as himself. is Mizuguchi as a whole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, cringe. That's that's fine. It's, you know, there's some directors where I'm like, this director really needs more attention. And, it, and I think Mizuguchi could definitely deserves more attention, but he's one of those directors where I'm like, he's, he's a nice little hidden secret and you can find yeah. him if you want, or you don't have to. I'm not worried because he's great. Keep or it at the secret. very least, he's very Keep interesting. Safe. Yeah. <laughs> so what did you, well, <laughs> before we get re- real quick, Ugetsu is based on some classic Japanese uh, folk tales, it tells the, the story of, uh, to pair two pairs of husband and wife one's a potter one is a aspiring uh, samurai the other husband is an aspiring samurai and they both uh aspire too much to their goals (laughs) and end up (laughs) screwing their families in a time of war and destruction in japan and it is it's got some interesting uh supernatural elements to it it weaves japanese culture and history throughout its narrative and it is fairly short too at. Yeah, ninety nine minutes, ninety six minutes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, Chandler, what did you think of Ugetsu? I liked this much more than Sancho the Bailiff. I'm I'm surprised that is the case. Why? I don't know. I thought you'd like it uh, about on par. They both seem very similar aesthetically to me. And so yeah. I, I, I'm it just feels like there should be a similar reaction to both. But interesting that here I think you well, like I think the difference, more. the difference to me is that Sancho the Bailiff to me felt like it was exploring um, uh, the, the, the just fucking horrible times that Japan used to live in, just sort of reveling in the sadness um, but this to me felt a lot more pointed in what it was trying to say. Instead of characters that were being corrupted by the world around them, I feel like they were being corrupted by they made decisions that cost them dearly. Whereas in Sancho the Bailiff, it's sort of out of their control. It's the environment that's directly affecting them. These people uh, succumb to greed so desperately that the ending is just absolutely depressing. Um, in in a similar way to Sancho, 
Yeah, Mizuguchi's but, really, really good. He really goes for those depressing, tragic endings. Yes. It yes. is, um, if you explore his filmography at all, it's it's par for the course. I think these two are the one, Sancho and Ugetsu are the two that um, perhaps have the best, the biggest impact. They're the most emotionally kind of devastating at the end. But essentially, most of his other movies do do they don't end on on particularly happy notes. But I'd say uh, bittersweet. You get a bittersweet ending. Yeah, the ending definitely. There's there's hope. There's uh, there's still hope. Where, where our discussion of under over the the garden wall. I'd say that that's a bittersweet ending, but a capital sweet. Yeah. This is a bittersweet ending. Capital bitter. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I, I really like this uh, part of me. Uh, I was worried at first because it, it does feel very disjointed um, mm-hmm. because it, it follows two couples, essentially. And they're not necessarily mirror experiences. They're they're yeah. both uh, tied together by these themes of greed. Uh, and, and they whatnot. get more divergent as the film goes on. So you, you yeah. start by following all four of them, then you follow the two of them, and then it, it fractals out until the end when they kind yeah. of come back together. And it's funny because uh, I, I watched this um, this whole last week. I've been uh, watching Samurai Champloo again, uh, starting mm. from the beginning. And I just come to the realization that warring era Japan has just got to be one of the worst fucking times to live in. Oh, my God. It's miserable. Oh, it's miserable. It, this is this is a the, the note I wrote down. Ugetsu is filled with misery, death and despair. It's God. just it really emphasizes hard times, violence. And and the greed and then the ambition that precipitate the, those hard times. The every, every facet of this world is just being driven by nothing but greed. You have uh, soldiers ravaging homes, looking for treasures and scraps. You have people. Uh, I mean, they're they're the main characters are in a way war profiteers. I mean, selling guns in time of war is not as bad as selling pots, <laughs> but they do go out of their way to say <laughs> that, like you know, uh, war profits made in wars are lost easily. Sure, uh, although I'm not exactly sure selling handmade pots during war is war profiteering well i think no, you're, i think your handmade you're pots right. are gonna sell well regardless of the war or not you're you're right you're right Ma- maybe better just... maybe those people shouldn't be buying pots they should be buying defenses for their homes But yeah, it's like, you know, uh, war, the, the, the economic opportunities that war um, uh, offers, the ambition, Japan, the career yeah. opportunities war offers. Yeah, it's just there's there's no hope in this world <laughs> until the very end. Um, but and another thing that uh, drew me to this movie is that it is it's it's a tale of greed at first, but it's also a really well done ghost story these are the kinds very of ghost stories it's, it's yes it's like a it's like a ghost story that appears in the middle of this tragic tale and, and makes it worse in in a, in a way cuz the like we said it fractals out we follow the both of the men both of the women and we it's just his story the uh the potter the, the Potter's Potter. story, um, his his little little vignettes. We cut back occasionally to him and his journeys into the the spirit world, and because the rest of it is fairly grounded, and I think you could say that the the idea of mysticism and something spiritual happening in the film is first introduced on the uh, the lake, the boat ride, which I think is. The first time in the movie when they, they travel over the, yeah, the lake. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, and I think that's the first time in the movie where it really sets a tone, an atmosphere other than war, gritty war. Like it, 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 it takes a, an interesting turn away from 
it's still dour and and miserable but it's in this this kind of weird creepy vibe and does a very good job at evoking that feeling and then it doesn't really come back until later just kind of like simmering under underneath where you get this feeling that there's there's something else there's something mystical about what's what's going on with him and then you know it's eventually revealed Yeah, well, it's it's it doesn't overpower you with that creep me at creepy atmosphere that tells you something is up. Like, obviously, there's something off about the the I don't know her name. Eyebrow lady. Um, uh, there's something off about her from the beginning and maybe just the way that she's dressed, the fact that she appears at the market out of nowhere with this weird little hat and her weird little servant. Uh, but then you go to the, the manor that they live in and it's a little creepy, but nothing, you know, nothing too spooky. It's out in the middle of nowhere. It's a bit creepy. Um, but yeah, towards the end, um, when they I guess when he finally realizes that she's a spirit, I think that seems just kind of terrifying <laughs> when he t- when he tells her that he has a wife. She kind of, kind of freaky. But uh, of all of all of the ghostings, my favorite is the final ghosting. Oh, yes. Yes. And it's 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 beautiful, sort of. That's that's where the bittersweet comes back in. And it's it's a really great like final sequence there. So spoilers, who cares? It's this old black and white Japanese film. So he finally goes home um, to his wife, who we know is dead, but she's there anyway. And they have like this last night together um and in a in a different film in shall we say Kwai Don it, it could go the Kwai Don route with the, like the black hair remember that one yeah yeah is she I th- in that because I think that the, I think that's referencing sort of that that story yeah. that that myth of, of Japanese culture because that's also a uh, a man who's been away from home for a very long time returns home his wife is there but in Nugetsu, it is this kind of um, uh, reunion. There's a sense of peace, uh, a reconciliation that happens, even though it's kind of all in his mind. Uh, but yeah. in Kwaidan, it's uh, more audition style revenge on the, <laughs> the man that disappeared. <laughs> Very spooky. Don't 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 forget your wife in in warring era Japan and your child <laughs> and your <Jesus>. child. <laughs> Yeah, I don't feel bad for him, but I I do enjoy that he got his kid back at the end. But that's that's those are the kinds of ghost stories I like where they don't look like ghosts. It's just it's after the fact. They you know, they look like humans. There's something off about them. I don't know. I might have missed it, but like when he comes in the house looking for everyone, is that part of the shot where he goes in there? There's no one out. He circles back around and comes back in. And she's lighting a fire. Mm-hmm. Is that in the scene? Yeah, that's mm-hmm. freaky. Yeah, <laughs> spooky. Well, it's also. <laughs> Really, um, this is sort of towards the not the end of Mizuguchi's career, but it's you know nearing the end, and he he certainly was much more stylistically. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, earlier in his career, he he was his style was much more uh, verbose. It was very obvious. Lots of yeah. long takes, slow takes. Um, and here it's it, it's fairly standard. I don't want to say standard filmmaking, um, but he's using uh, why just plain master shots cutting into the action. It's not terribly complicated or long, but there are long takes and it's really interestingly shot in how dynamic it is, particularly in the beginning with his use of um the foreground, middle ground, and background of, of yeah. using all the different spaces of uh, the frame, of m- moving the camera within the scene, of reframing things within a camera shot. That shot's particularly uh, when it does, it circles around and she's not there in the beginning yep. of the shot and then she's there at the end. Great. Um, 
breathing. There's a lot of a lot of great shots in the, in the beginning of the movie where it's it's wide shots. It moves in, moves out, closer, and it's it's a fairly really really well shot film. Lighting too, in particular scenes, like it can be. There are some shots where it's just like it, you can probably tell that it was shot on a sound like large portions of it were shot on a sound stage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And you can tell sometimes it looks a little uh, artificial, not necessarily in a bad way. Um, and it looks kind of um, just standard. Here's the camera. Here's the scene. But then there's other times where it's really evocative lighting and framing and stuff. And it's it's a good mixture of all of that. It's not totally devoted to to crazy visuals, but when it needs to do something poetic visually or aesthetically interesting, it, it does it and does it really well. A lot of really creepy sound work in this too mm -hmm. i don't that, that scene where uh, he's talking to the the spirit about how he has a wife and it reveals all of the the anti-ghost markings on him uh, for some reason i don't know what it is but there's this like little bell ringing sound in the background i don't know who's doing it i don't know what it is <laughs> but as the scene becomes more and more freaky with that ghost revealing uh, that she is a ghost, it, it it becomes it's like I, I still have no idea what it is. But, you know, what I'm talking about that little uh, that clanking sound that's in the background of that whole scene. Yeah. yeah. It becomes like the the more she reveals of her, her ghostly nature, it becomes more irregular. Um, it's got a nice slow pace to it. I have no idea what it is, but it's just a small thing that really fucking creeps me out. Um, yeah, it's, it's a good little. Sp it's not as uh, it wasn't as much of a horror movie as I was expecting, but those little pockets of it are very spooky. But it's like it's, it's a light have... ghost story. Yeah, it's yeah. myth and ghosts. To, well, to me, it's funny because you have like that side, the Potter and his wife. That's that's spooky. It's mystic. Um, but then the other side, which I find equally uh, uh, compelling, but in a more realistic way. The story of the other husband who's the, the aspiring samurai and i find that just that arc so fascinating when he 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 kills the guy who had who gets the general's head <laughs> and then takes all of the credit for it and this sort of like complete overnight shift of like this bumbling cowering samurai to him with this like faux pride as he walks into the brothel and finds his wife working there. <laughs> Very interesting little dynamic. And there is hope at the end of that story because I like that this movie allows them at least to learn their lesson, um, albeit with great consequences, costs. But I do like the the comparatively hopeful ending it ends on as opposed to Sancho, which is just the most fucking depressing ending of all time. <laughs> yeah. And uh, another, another piece of imagery that I thought was really worked really well is the, the tale of him at the, the manor, uh, the ghost story part of this. And it's, there's some really great shots of, when they're they're kind of like in their romance phase before we know it's a she's a ghost. They're out on the um, the grassy field out by the lake and there's a, a tree and it's it's a very well framed shot. Uh, and then particularly haunting is at the end when he he wakes up from his his battle with the ghosts and he wakes up in the ruins of the old uh, yeah. mansion. And it's just they're they're burnt out and jagged edges and the 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 lighting the way it's lit and then in the background in the soundtrack she's um singing uh, yeah and it's very very faint very eerie and ghost-like and it's 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 one of those great uh mood evoking moments of the movie there's a, a little funny scene so it's only funny to me because i'm an english speaker when they're on the boat you know going to wherever and she's singing that song she it's it's I don't know. Again, I know nothing about the Japanese language. I always find it funny. They're singing. There's like two vowels and those two vowels are translated to like two whole fucking lines of English. <laughs> <to me. laughs> 
Yep. Oh, Japan. Oh, Japan. Oh, Japan. Never change. But yeah, very, very solid, very solid movie. I'm, I, it's, it's, I don't know. It's, it's such a, it's such a, almost formless movie. It's so restrained. It's so unstylish, but says so much by doing so. It's, it's difficult to distill. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I really, I want to get the Criterion now. I, I quite enjoyed it. It's a good Criterion. Got it's got plenty of stuff. Um, speaking of Kaneto Shindo, the director of Onibaba, he did a direct uh, documentary, which is on the Blu-ray, and it's, it's I feel like it's three hours long and it's about Kenji Mizuguchi and he just goes around interviewing everyone he could find from his from oh, Mizuguchi's past af- like after he died. Hmm. It was, I watched a little bit of it, you know, it's, it was a bit bit three long hours long. <laughs> yeah, for the Mizuguchi fans. Yeah. The hardcore fans. Um, with with Ugetsu, I'm not as emotionally attached to the characters as I am in Sancho. Sancho. I don't I don't think there's yeah. uh, there's there's far more to get invested in in Sancho. But I think uh, Ugetsu has perhaps the the more interesting plotting, the more ambiguous uh, morals and things to say, and it's it. Mizuguchi is is sort of a um a progressive when it comes to Japanese society, but I find it interesting that you could read the film as uh telling people to stay in their place in life uh, as like these yeah. two peasants try to uh overstep their bounds in society, they get punished and in the end they're happy because they're back in their in their fucking place in the village <laughs> with their families. <laughs> And don't okay. leave. Don't don't want more in life. I'm not saying this is what the movie's saying, but you could yeah, read no, it that I way. Agree. I agree. It and could I, be I read that way. To, mm-hmm. to, well, to me, it's more about like ambition without exploitation. Um, because obviously it's about greed. Don't make pots for soldiers, I guess. <laughs> but like he's obviously he's not making an honest living. He's profiteering off war, not in the same way other people do. The other guy, definitely. I mean, he fucking he killed a guy and stole his honor for personal gain. Um, and then in the end, you know, he's working hard. He's yeah. working hard and at I, the little I, thing. For me, I think it's less the, the the war is less important about the morals. It's more that he's trying to profit for the sake of profit that he he's yeah, yeah, yeah. forgets the fact that he's doing it for his wife and kid and that they have enough money. They're the reason. And he loses sight of that and is more interested in, in just selling as much as he as he can. And yeah, at yeah. the end, I think it is ultimately a advocating for um, responsibility to to those that you love, that you you have work. But that work should be in service of of something that's more emotionally fulfilling. Yeah. And something that you've uh, a life that you, you have responsibilities towards and you should not neglect. Bottom line, Mizuguchi's based. And Mizuguchi's great. Yes, I do Very a little nice. interesting plug for another Mizuguchi film here. The the Loyal Forty Seven Ronin. It's um, it's like three three and a half hours or something. It's uh two parts, and this is earlier on Mizuguchi, so it is um really interesting framing, but the shots are long, like <laughs> like oh, like it's just. slowly moving like very evocative of like japanese picture scrolls like scrolls of that kind mm, of yeah yeah and i think the aesthetically i find it almost more interesting than sancho or ugetsu even though it's it's not a better movie than those movies mm-hmm. um but i do i do recommend some of his his earlier work where it is much more like stylistically uh, flamboyant and and leans into his his own like slowness mm. and Japanese ness. He's a very he's a very Japanese director, and I find it interesting that like like Ozu, he's very Japanese, but in a very different way. He's more into the the myth and the culture of Japan of of classic 
Japan and of looking at society in Japan yeah. rather than than Ozu's more kind of grounded and and based in real life and family yeah, dynamics in contemporary Japan. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Examine the past to explain the the present. Yeah. A lot of that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, does is Ugetsu one of the best films ever made? Does it deserve to be on the? the I would say yes. List? Towards the bottom, though, I'm gonna say towards the bottom. Interesting. I, I did say yes to to Sancho the Bailiff. I th- Morgan. <laughs> Sorry. Hi. <laughs> 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 A visitor of the podcast, special guest. <laughs> I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say yes to. To this one as well oh, okay um in it's honor in honor Andy of Getsu. of marty and he the people like, enjoy Ugetsu. directors yeah. who, who like ugetsu yes it is um it's a very unique experience one of the other reasons is because i think it is um one of the the better examples of um classic japanese culture it mm. does a, a great job of of showing um the differences in society from from our western perspective uh the different like roles in the history of japan but also you know you see things like kimonos and the way that the the army is formulated and how you advance in society and it's got the uh japanese music the biwa little, little i think there might also be a shamisan in the, in the film somewhere but also the the style of singing the classical style of singing in, in japan so as always, I think it's a bit of a cultural document, which I like. Always fun. Thanks, uh, thanks for watching. That was, that was our review of Ugetsu. And uh, of course, we were also reviewing Audition over the garden wall. It's fun. Great things. I think we recommend all three of them. Uh, they're all to, good. To all a greater good. or lesser extent. Yeah. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, do do the thing. Bell. Appreciate it. Bell, comment, uh, yeah, all of it.